In the heart of Africa's intricate tapestry, a figure emerged whose ascent and fall would cast a shadow that lingers to this day. Idi Amin Dada, a name that would become synonymous with brutality and unchecked power, embarked on a journey that would reshape Uganda's history, leaving scars that time has yet to fully heal. Join us on a journey through the rise and fall of Edi Amin Dada, a man who embodied both the heights of power and the depths of human cruelty. Edi Amin Dada's ascent from humble beginnings to becoming one of the most infamous dictators in African history is a story of ambition, manipulation, and brutal power consolidation. Born around 1923 in the rural town of Koboko in northwest Uganda, Amin joined the British colonial army as a young man. His physical stature and charisma earned him the nickname Big Daddy. Amin's military career saw him rise through the ranks and he soon became involved in Ugandan politics. In 1971, as a senior army officer, he saw an opportunity to seize power amid growing discontent with President Milton Obote's government. While Obote was attending a summit in Singapore, Amin staged a coup and declared himself president, promising stability and prosperity for Uganda. Initially, Amin projected an image of a populist leader and a man of the people. However, it wasn't long before his true nature became evident. Amin's rise was accompanied by a surge in brutality. He purged the military of potential rivals, eliminating officers who could challenge his authority. As his grip on power tightened, he expanded his reach into all aspects of Ugandan society. Amin's reign of terror was characterized by arbitrary arrests, torture, and extrajudicial killings. Dissent was met with ruthless suppression. In 1972, Amin embarked on a campaign of ethnic cleansing, expelling Uganda's Asian population, which made up a significant portion of the country's economy. This move not only devastated the economy, but also further isolated Uganda internationally. Amin's erratic behavior and bizarre declarations made him a pariah on the global stage. His overtures to dictatorship and his anti-Western rhetoric earned him few allies among the international community. His audacious move to declare himself the last King of Scotland and the conqueror of the British Empire only deepened the perception of him as unhinged. One of the most dramatic incidents of his rule occurred in 1976 when Amin allowed the hijacking of an Air France plane to Entebbe, leading to an intense standoff and a daring rescue operation by Israeli commandos. Amin's military aggression extended beyond Uganda's borders. In 1978, he invaded Tanzania, seeking to annex the Kagera region. This decision proved to be his undoing. Tanzania, under President Julius Nyerere, responded with force, leading to the Uganda-Tanzania War. In 1979, Tanzanian forces, along with Ugandan exiles, marched into Uganda's capital, Kampala, overthrowing Amin's regime. Fleeing the country, Amin first found refuge in Libya and later moved to Saudi Arabia. He spent the remainder of his life in exile, cut off from the power he had wielded so brutally. In his absence, the extent of the atrocities committed during his regime came to light, revealing the horrors that had been inflicted upon Ugandans. In 